Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be continuing our analysis of two-dimensional kinematics, specifically with projectile motion. And what I think we're going to see is that projectile motion is actually just a combination of two things we already know. We already understand freefall, which is one-dimensional projectile motion, objects that go up or down, or both up and down. That's just one-dimensional uh, projectile motion. Now we're going to add a second dimension. So we've got this. So now we just have to add this, and that will be two dimensions. We already know how two-dimensional motion works, at least when it's on the surface of the Earth, but now that we're going to have it going through the air, things are going to be a little different. So there are three types of projectile motion that we can do in two dimensions. The first option is an object that is launched, and it goes like so, and it lands. So it is launched horizontally off of some surface, so it just like that. Option two is one that we've kind of talked about before when we talked about jumping, and that's where you are launched and land at exactly the same height. So you start here, you go up, over, and down, and you land at the same height that you originally began at. And this, of course, will be what we call type two. Type three is not symmetric, unlike type two. Type three, you are going to be launched at some position. You're going to land at some other position. So you go up, and you come down, and you're, you didn't stop here. You keep going further. So it could be that I launch right like this, high, and then go lower, or it could be I launch low and end higher. Either one would work. Now, we have some assumptions that we can base off of for this purpose, right? If you take a look at the notes, we've got all of them. There are five in total. Option one, the motion in one dimension has no bearing on the motion in another dimension. We saw this with the river questions, right? When you get in the river, it doesn't matter how fast the river is going if you want to get across the river. Right? The river just takes you this way. You don't want to go that way. You want to go this way. So we see the same thing with projectile motion. If I have two objects, we saw this when we talked about the uh, motion is independent. If I have two objects, right, and I drop one and I throw one, they end up both doing the same basic thing. Right? I drop one and I throw one. No doubt going to break. Yep, I already broke the pencil lead. That's what I get. So I drop one and I throw one, and they both hit the bottom of the screen at the same time because gravity pulls them both the same, no matter which way I'm throwing them around. So that's the first most important thing. The second thing, horizontal motion, we're going to assume that horizontal motion is constant. There's no acceleration. It's not technically true, but we're going to pretend it's true because otherwise things get really complicated really fast. But this is all because we're going to ignore air resistance. C. Vertical motion is affected by gravity, otherwise known as g, 9.8. So while this has no acceleration, this will. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Rule d, when the object hits the ground, we're going to assume that it stops instantly. None of this bouncing or rolling or anything like that. It's just it comes up, it comes down, stops dead. Nothing happens. Finally, the last one, the time of the vertical motion is the same as the time of the horizontal motion. We saw this with relative motion. The times connected things. And that's it. With those fundamental ideas, we're going to be able to work out all of the different details that we need. So in your notes, you guys have a type 1 horizontal projectile example. Right? So let's take a look at it. From the top of a 50 meter cliff, the class decides to toss in the notes, it's blank because I always put in somebody new. I asked the audience, the class, who do we want to throw off a cliff? Last year, they threw me off a cliff. So given that we're putting this on a video, I figured it only makes sense that we're going to throw me off a cliff again. Hopefully, you guys aren't as mean as my last year's class, but eh, well, you can't win them all. So from the top of a 50-meter cliff, the class tosses Mr. C straight out at 10 meters per second. Whoa! Talk about being mean, guys. All right, so we got ourselves a cliff. Okay, and here you guys all are. Right, there's a whole bunch of you, and you guys are tossing me off a cliff. Let's see, I'll give myself some glasses. And give myself a little bit of a beard there, and you're tossing me off the cliff at 10 meters per second, and it says the cliff is 50 meters high. It then asks us three questions. Question one. How far, how long am I in the air? How long am I in the air? Uh, 
Come on, let's use some proper English here. Oh, heck, we could even put a capital. How long is Mr. C in the air? Okay. Well, in order to solve this question, we need to properly track all the information. And what we saw with relative motion is that we end up breaking things down into x and y. And we're going to do the same thing here. So we take out our trusty markers, and we're going to go x. And we've got vi, vf, a, d, t. And y. We've got vi, vf, a, d, t. So let's fill in the information that we have, right? We always want to collect our information. So first things first, horizontal motion, there's no acceleration. So it's going to be zero, whatever it is. The initial velocity is 10 meters per second. And that's the same as the final velocity because there's no acceleration. I don't know d. I don't know t. But I'm going to have to find them. And I know one of my rules is that the t's are equal to each other in some way. Why? Well, because we saw with relative motion, right? The time I have. The time it takes me to cross the river is how long the river has to push me. If I get across the river faster, the river can't push me as long. Same thing is happening here. The time I have to go through the air depends on how long it takes for me to hit the ground. If I take longer to hit the ground, I have more time to fly through the air. Now, the initial velocity, it says it's 10, but that's for the horizontal. In the vertical dimension, right, going this way, there's no velocity to begin with. We don't know what the final velocity is, but we do know the acceleration is g, which is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared down. The height, well, we know the height. It's 50 meters. And the time, we don't know. Now, if we take a look at all this information, what do we see? Well, over here, I don't have enough to solve anything. But here, I do. One, two, three. I can solve this. And what happens is, is that we solve this one and the time gets pulled over. This is very similar to what we've been doing with one-dimensional um, kinematics. The only difference is now these two ideas, y and x, are connected in some way. So what are we going to do? Well, uh, let's see. We're looking for the time. So we've got VA, we have A, and we have D. So we could use equation 5. D equals VIT plus AT squared over 2. So d is going to be 50. vi is going to be 0, so that makes that easy. a is 9.8 t squared over 2. We don't know t, but we're looking for it. We get all that ready, and then I pull out my trusty calculator. And we go. 9, let's see, so let's see. 50 times 2 is 100, divided by 9.8 equals, we're going to take the square root of that. As I find the square root button, there it is. So it's going to tell us here that the time is 3.19 seconds. OK, there we go. That is the answer to the time question, 3.19 seconds, so 3.2 seconds. So right down here, I get to fill in that this is going to take 3.2 seconds to reach the ground. And because these two are connected, that means this will take 3.2 seconds to reach the ground. OK, so far so good. Uh, this is very similar to uh, any kind of a river question where I say, uh, how long does it take to cross the river? Well, in the same vein, how long does it take to get to the ground? How long does it take to cross the ground? The air? Cross the air? We can say cross the air, maybe? And that's it. That's all we needed to do. We just put these together like this, and then we solve our final answer. B, how far? is Mr. C by equation 5 from the cliff. So when I hit the ground, make that nice splat sound, where am I, right? I've been thrown forward, so I'm going to fall. Oh, I should have put these numbers somewhere else. I'm going to fall somewhere over here, right? I'm some distance away. Somewhere. Well, that's going to be this one. 
right? And we have the time now, so this is actually pretty easy to solve. It's going to be the same equation again, equation 5, d equals vit plus at squared over 2. d is going to equal vi, which is 10, times t, which is 3.2, and a is 0, so that goes away. So this becomes d of 32 meters, and that's it. That's all I had to do. I just took the time of the fall and used that to figure out how far I would go. What we can see is, is that all of these different things are connected to each other, right? They're only connected by time. That's the only thing that actually joins them. But in terms of the mathematics, it's just a bunch of one-dimensional kinematic problems. We just happen to attach them together. And that's sort of the thing about two-dimensional kinematics. We take one-dimensional problems and we attach them together in order to make the two-dimensional answers. And that's because, of course, working in two dimensions directly is a lot more work. Last step. C. How fast is Mr. C when he hits the ground? Now, since you guys are a much nicer class than my last one, I'm going to assume I have a nice little cushion that I get to land on, but uh, this is still probably going to hurt. All right, well, how fast am I when I hit the ground? That's going to be a velocity final. Oh, but we have both x and y. We're going to need to Pythagoras this, right? It's two-dimensional. But that first means I need to calculate vf, because I don't have it yet. I have vf for x, but not for y. Well, on the plus side, I have lots of information, so any equation will do. Uh, let's do vf equals vi plus at. That should do it. Uh, vf equals 0. That's easy. 9.8 and time, which is 3.2. Get out the trusty calculator again. says here that my final velocity is 31.36 meters per second. I don't think that foam mat is going to be enough, guys. I have a funny feeling this is going to hurt. 0.36 meters per second. Ah, but which way? It's going to be down, right? Because I was falling down, not going up. Now, whether or not I make down positive or negative, it's up to you. You can make it negative if you want. I'm probably going to make it positive just because I never go up in this particular case, unfortunately. Just for fun here, let's quickly see here. This is going to be, uh, yeah, I'm moving 112 kilometers per hour. I don't think the math's going to be enough. Oh, well, let's see what we can figure out. So what's happening here, right, is that we have calculated our velocity final for the vertical, and we know the velocity final for the horizontal, for the x, because there's no acceleration, so it stays exactly the same. If we take this picture here and we make it nice and big so we can easily see it, right? So there's the mat and I'm coming in like this and I'm going to hit it. Well, there's the vertical velocity like so, which we just said was 31.36. And there's the horizontal velocity like this, which we said was 10. Well, we know how to do that. That's just a triangle. So we just got to do some Pythagoras here in order to work out the length of this vector. Right? Let's put it in green like we normally do. So what's that? Well, all I got to do is take my 31 squared, okay, 31.36. Let's not completely round it before I even get to the end. 36 squared and a 10 squared equals, there's our c squared. Put it all together, what are we going to get? Uh, let's see, 31.36 squared plus 100 square root of all that, we're going to get a total of 32.92 meters per second. Okay, so not a huge change there, which kind of makes sense because this is not a very big number and this is quite a big number. So it probably makes sense that overall we're leaning towards that number, but it's bigger because it's a hypotenuse, of course. Uh, are we done? No. We need an angle. Always we need an angle for 2D, so we need an angle for this. Now, on the plus side, the angle is going to be easy. It's going to be tan theta equals 10 over 31.36. So I just simply go 
10 divided by 31.36. Inverse 10 of that, and I'm going to get an angle of 17 degrees. 17.7. Ah, let's just say 18 degrees. 18 degrees what, though? It's not north. It's not south. Right? Like north and south measure things on the surface of the Earth, but we're talking about me coming down like this. So we use a slightly different terminology for this. Um, don't have enough room here, so I'm just going to move it over a little bit so we can see. So it's going to be 32.92 meters per second, comma, 18 degrees. Below the horizontal is one way to write it. Below the horizontal, as in here's the horizontal, and I'm going below the horizontal. I'm going down, so it's this angle here. The other one that we could use, which might fit very nicely here, is uh, we are... 18 degrees depressed because I'm going to be pretty depressed when I hit the ground like that. Well, not for long, probably. And there we go. This is the answer for C. And what we can see here, I hope, very clearly is that the math for this is um, very familiar at this point. Realistically, right, uh, all we had to do was that the difference between a river going across a river and being thrown through the air is very minimal, right? Gravity is like the current, and gravity took us 50 meters down. And then in the throw, managed to get us 32 meters across. So we just solved each piece separately. And then, of course, we had to figure out the final result, the resultant, the velocity I had when I hit the ground, which is a combination of the horizontal and the vertical. And it's all just... Pythagoras, trig, call it a day. The only real new thing here was the fact that, um, if anything, it's uh, easier in a lot of ways. I mean, the up-down part was the same. That nothing, nothing new there. The horizontal component was just a constant velocity, which we just had to include. And then, I guess, depressed, right? We learned about depressed or below the horizontal. There's also going to be above the horizontal. But... And that could be otherwise known as elevated, but otherwise it's all stuff you've done before. And that's kind of the thing. Two-dimensional is a lot of steps. Don't get me wrong, it's a lot of steps. But they're steps that you know. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, this is the type 1 problems. The next video will show you how to do the type 2 problems, which again, reminder, is launch and land at the same height. So, you know, we launch and land like this, we come up, we come back down. And we already kind of know how a lot of this is going to work. It's symmetric, so you get to cheat a little bit. You get to use a lot of little shortcuts in order to solve everything a lot easier. But I will leave that for next time.